introduction. So, uh, what you see here. First of all, who are you? I am Supun Samarasekara. I'm a technical director from the Princeton office in SRI uh, in the vision and robotics activity there. So, in my activity, we do a lot of work in augmented reality, specifically for the military. Yeah. So I'm going to show you some of the technology we've developed there that we think is going to become more and more prevalent in the commercial world also. And so these are augmented reality binoculars. That is right. So I have Google Glass on, which does not do augmented reality. A lot of people think Google Glass actually that is, does. That is correct. You can do some form of it in very simple ways, but if you want an immersive experience, it doesn't really do that yet. We are hoping it will get there. Uh, so uh, what it is, is we've taken a military binocular system yeah. and taken the guts out. We printed the shell and put our own uh, equipment in there so this this is, is 3d printed it's really this cool. is this is pretty 3d printed yeah right so just to give you some motivation of what we want to do with it so in the military world we are using it for military training but i thought i'll motivate it from some of the commercial applications so one is for things like tourism right yep. if you walk around there are so much geotagged information out in the world what you want to do is to pick up your binox, look around, and start seeing geotags. Okay. Right? So basically, you can mark up interesting sites to see. Now, this, this is interesting. Can yeah. I tag, if I looked at the Transamerica building, could I tag it through the binocular? And then if other people were using the same binocular, would they see that tag? Yes. <laughs> I can understand why the military would be interested in us. Okay. So, and the second part is information sharing, as you were just saying. Yeah. So you can mark up a spot, leave a message behind, not just mark up a point, but actually yeah. leave a message for a specific person. And when the person looks at it, uh, you will be able to see the can, message. Can these tags be put on movable things, by the way, like trucks or people? Or? Um, not not right now. So, I mean, the technology, we are just introducing geotags over what is seen. Yeah. Fundamentally, if you have a way of tracking the person, it can be inserted as things that you see. And in the military world, we do that for airplanes and stuff. I'll show you a demo yeah. of that, quick video of that very shortly. So will there be a mobile app that goes with this so that I can tell Sco send this to Scoble? So uh, that is right. The hope would be eventually we have this other VPA technology. You'll just speak to the binox and say, look, send this to so and so. And it will tag the message and send okay. it. Right? So no yeah. keyboard, nothing hands free. And the, the goal in the future is to have it be able to tag moving objects. So that's right. When you're all in the whale watching boat and somebody knows that that's a gray <laughs> whale mother with a calf. <laughs> Well, you can see where the military would be. They've already disclosed that they can uh, put a drone up above us, 17,000 feet above us, and watch 17 square miles with moving video down to a resolution of six inches. That's up on YouTube, so that's public information. And so you can imagine when, when you have that overhead view, then you need somebody on the ground to tra tag all the uh, right. things that are on the ground. That's right, know? and whatever you're tracking could be tagged and followed on the ground. And I'll show you something similar that we do. So a second area is now what we would like to do is to actually publish an interface where others can plug in their own thing, whether it's a tracker, as you were saying, yeah. or for you know recreational sports. You know, If you, someone comes up with a bird watching or bird detector, you could plug it in. Now you can move around your binox and suddenly it will go bing, bing, bing. I found a bird and it will guide you to find the bird. Right? Now, and it will probably tell you all sorts of things uh, about the bird. That's right, exactly. Yeah. Now, yes, Just using something like Google, Go Google Goggles, not Google Glasses, <laughs> but the image search engine, uh, cloud-based search engine, you can could, easily... Exactly. So you hope is that you plug it into the cloud and that will do the processing and feed back the information. Now, yesterday, someone was Rex, just... where I work, we love the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> we, we love people like you who are going to bring more imagery and more uh, databases into the world. <laughs> now, yesterday, someone was suggesting a very cool idea in this Boston um, marathon situation kind of yeah. thing. They say, can you plug in a people detector that has a list of people of interest? And can someone be just looking around and get say, okay, go look at this person more? Right, so he, 
it's an interesting thing. And yeah. you know, if you have a framework like this, you should be able to plug in stuff. Yeah, like for, that. face detection is clearly coming. Right. Facebook already bought face.com, right. which is an Israeli company, yeah. and it worked pretty good. And, and the key thing is you need the resolution yeah. to detect the face, right? So with the Binox, I mean, a lot of the time, if you look at the webcams that are up on the roofs of buildings, it cannot do the job, right? So if you have something like this, can potentially actually work. Yep. So here's a military application that they use it, uh, use the system for. And this is for what they call the forward observers. These are the guys who are out in the battlefield who mark up targets uh, for, you know, purposes yep. you can all imagine. Uh, so what you see on the left here is the kicked up version of your Google glasses, which is true augmented reality glasses a person is wearing. And he can see the helicopter flying. This is a virtual helicopter and through the binox it's sharing the view that is showing the zoomed in view half a mile away of a vehicle it's attacking. Right? So there are multi -people, multiple people watching this. This is the Google Glass, future Google Glass, view, I would say. Yeah. And that is the Binoc view, and they are training on how to call for fire. So this is one of the applications we are using uh, this for. So are you seeing this as a future competitor to Google Glass? I actually think Google Glass will want this technology yeah. <laughs> more than well, I, uh, you, I, know, you, know, you know, this is where it will go. How yeah. soon? Until something like this can fit into something like Google Glass? I think it's not far. I mean, if you look at most of the mobile processing platforms, you know, you get 4 core, 8 core mobile processors coming uh, right now. Yeah. I think it's a, a matter of time. The sensing is there, uh, the cloud is there, and all these things are coming together to really make this a viable system. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's a couple of it's, slides. It's, you know, it's really interesting seeing wearing the Google Glass product. Um, yeah. It's very clear that Google had to make some trade-offs for weight, for battery life, and for cost. That's right. They're that's clearly right. aiming this at a $200, $300 price point. That's right. Um, if, if not at retail at first, they might yeah. charge $500 or you know, so, so at first, but the cost of this is going to be under $200 that's to build, right. and that's yeah. really interesting. This stuff would raise the cost or raise the battery that's or raise right. the weight, yes. and that's, that's going to be further out. But I think it, when you get to commercial quantities, all this become you know, more viable, yeah. uh, so, so, so that's the key point. What's the image resolution of the sensors that are um, in, in the air? So right now, a lot of the stuff we use is uh, limited to 1280, 1024, and it's mainly because the iPhone display resolutions and displays that you can go on these things, but that is also technology that's evolving very fast. Yeah. So that, that's a lot sharper than the resolution of my Google Glass. That's right. I, I believe the screen resolution is 320 by 240, right? Which right. looks pretty sharp, but it's not really good for yeah. photos or for live video. That kind is of right. That is right. So. All those so, have to so you have two of these displays here? Yes. The displays, are they 4K displays? or No, this is very basic uh, uh, VGA resolution displays. We okay. have higher resolution displays. I didn't bring one of those systems here. Yeah. Um, but uh, this is, what you see here is a Vuzix how, <laughs> glass. How, how much does this cost you to build today? I mean, uh, it's all custom built. But. Yeah, I mean, the... Parts I would say is about between ten to fifteen thousand dollars worth of parts. And the right time now. invested. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> whole augmented reality, we have over twenty million dollars worth of workflow that we've invested in it. So I mean, what you're seeing here is not through one program; it's over many, yeah. many programs. Uh, but this one we've been doing for about a year right now. What I'm going to show you. So what would we see if we look through this? So, the first application, and it's the same image that you're going to see here. Yeah. What I did is before you came, I set this up, I marked a few things with messages That's, for you, you guys. You can see it's uh, live. <laughs> right? Right. So. And, and the key idea here is, let me move this to someplace else. See this line? Yeah. It tells you how to get to the message. Right? Yeah. So, if you pick this up, and follow the line, you can see where the hello Robert message I put there. 
would come up. Wow. Uh, you're welcome to try it, otherwise I, I can do it for you. Sure. And <laughs> can I see? Oh yeah, yeah I let, can actually let, see the let, image. Yeah, let, let me pick it up. You can actually pick it up, hold it in your hands and do it. All right, uh, let me... Uh, <laughs> I'm live, so... Yeah. Right, so now follow the line. Yeah, see, like that. when the line becomes short, you are at the message. Yep. Right? Now, wow. I also created a message for you, Shell. So, <laughs> it's always wrong. Sure. So you can see if if you were over, let's say uh, over that way with another you, pair, you, you, could, I would be able to see that message. If the message is is aligned in three D. In three D. Right? So, so if I was over across the so courtyard, now follow the line till the line becomes short. So go in the direction of the line. Go left. Yeah. I oh that line there. Oh there I go. see. Okay. Yeah. Shell, welcome to S R. Oh, you went a little too far. <laughs> well, I, I read it before it disappeared. On <laughs> That's me. right. It's, it's still there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I forgot you're all seeing what I'm saying. Yep. That's so right. you can see how bad I am with military level <laughs> binoculars. The other point is you want to talk about how the technology is independent of this one pose. How is uh, basically yeah. you're reconstructing the three D photogrammetry of all the all the information. So so when you tag that building yes. and you put a message on it for me, yes. that that tag is exists in a three-dimensional three. space. So exactly. we would see that space even if we walked across. Exactly. So, so they are, these are all getting geotagged. Now what is very interesting is that is geotagged and we are very precisely geolocating the binoculars. So when you're, I could take this to the roof up there, you'd see the same tags. But not only that, if you put 3D objects, you'll see them in the correct perspective from that point. Right? So the next demo I'm going to show you is actually putting some characters down. Right? Now if he went up to that roof, the, if the guy was looking that way, he'd see face first, I would see the side here. So it's actually putting 3D entities, truly 3D geolocated in the 3D world. Wow. Right? So, so this wow. is, so like what you see here, this is a real back-end game engine that's yeah. running here, and it's working in the real world. So think of the next generation games you're playing in the real world. Yeah, Google is already playing with 3D walk-around games called Ingress, mm -hmm. and it's pretty interesting that you yeah. have to walk. It puts virtual objects on the world, and you have to walk into the virtual objects to play with them. That's and right. And that's, that's pretty, right. uh, yep. Yep. pretty interesting. Yep. Um, so, so you could see a whole bunch of commercial applications, but it's going to be... <laughs> you know, five to fifteen years before we get this, right. this kind of technology in our glasses. That is correct. So this is a, but you know, for us, everywhere we see a video camera, we want to augment it. Right? Yeah. So if you're wearing one in our head, we want to augment it. If it's in the binox, we want to augment it. We should if do it's a vehicle, we want to augment it. We should talk about it. <laughs> so you want it in the iPhone too. Yeah. That's right. So, any, so any the, smartphone. Yeah, any, any, anything that has a camera, that's where we want it to get. Uh, and that's all right. Tell that you clip on, you <laughs> want that to be on. <laughs> HD, <laughs> HD, TV, HD TV was invented here, and so yeah. were some of the things like the uh, lines on football fields that during TV. Correct. That is Cause, correct. Uh, uh, right? That, you guys bought right. Sarnar that, that, for Sarnar? That, uh, that, that came out of our lab. Certainly <laughs> HDTV was done by uh, the Princeton group yeah. at SRI. And also what was originally the group that did the lines on the football fields, that was called PEB, Princeton Electronic Bulletin Boards, and that came out of Sarnoff, which is now part of SRI as well. Very cool. So you guys have a, you, you're not kidding when you say uh, you love to augment every video camera. <laughs> we see video, we see augmentation. <laughs> How will that change the world when all the cameras are augmented? See, the thing is, we are really getting to a point, there's so much information, and there's information overload and geo-specific access to information is a key thing we believe is useful, you know? Yeah. You, you really want information just in time, just in place, right? So, so that is what the augmented reality can provide for you. So, so. I, one of the things I want to do with the Google Glass, and it doesn't do it yet, is just say, hey, show me the closest Taco Bell, or show me, right. show me right. the closest Starbucks. Yeah. Using this technology, somebody could sit up and just yeah. tag a lot of things really, really quickly. That's right. Now, Google already has a, a, like a Starbucks yeah. tag, but yeah. 
this would be very, very useful yeah. for that kind of stuff. Just to Shell's question for a second, the um, if we had the ability to use augmented reality for all cameras, that could be an organizing principle for all the information in the world. As Supin just said, it, yeah. the information is there, it's contextually located in space for you, which is, people think about space a lot. We act differently in our kitchen than we do in the office, right? So you want different information represented in different ways in different places, and that's the kind of thing that this technology can give you. Wow. It's really uh, pretty crazy. I, I don't know if you saw the Israeli company that helped uh, the FBI look through thousands of photos and videos of the Boston bombing, but it compressed all of those images so that they could scan and compare movements of people mm -hmm. in real time. It was really pretty amazing technology that, that I was reading about this morning. Um, you add that with this, and you're going to be able to see the world in a completely oh, yeah. different way in 10, yeah. 5, 10, 15, 20 years, right? Right. And again, not, not just what's there, but what you can put there for the purposes of helping people understand things better or just organize their world. Yeah. I, you know, I, I said the Google Glass is really a shift for Google from an advertising-based world to a commerce-based world. Because when I walk in, we're going to go to a San Francisco Giants game with the Google Glass. The PR team invited us over there to talk about how sports would change with walkable, you know, wearable computers. Because Google's not the only one doing these kinds right. of wearable computers. But you're going to be able to look around the stadium and see where the bathrooms are, or right. where the hot dog stand is, or where right. your friends are in the stadium. I can already do that with the Oakley glasses, right? So, just one more thing, if you if you want a wild idea. So, the if you go back in history, like 500 years, um, human memory was something that was super important. And when you went to university, they would teach you how to memorize things. And one of the ways they would do that is spatially. So they had this concept of a memory palace, where you'd imagine yourself walking through rooms, and the things that you were visualizing just in your imagination would help you remember things. Yeah. So now we're going to be able to do that in augmented reality. It will be an augmentation of human memory and cognition. Pretty interesting stuff. We're going to put our task list on that building. <laughs> no, it's not a joke. I know it's not a joke because I, I'm actually going to apply, like if I need to pick up a, a power outlet, I need to pick that up at the hardware store, right? right? So I'm going to put it on the hardware store, yeah. and that way when I walk within uh, 100 okay, yards uh, of the hardware store, up comes my test list. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. list yeah. doesn't have to be text. It can yeah. be exactly yeah. that yeah. item that you need to pick up. This is the okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you got the characters up on the Yeah, so yeah, yeah. while you were chatting yeah. there, so so this... Oh, you mean a character like a human. Yeah, uh, right. So you put a fake human, yeah. a virtual so, human. Yeah, so right? now here I don't have the game engine, otherwise they could be running around too. So if you look, uh, there are oh some special God. VIPs here. You gotta see this. So who's oh in a Humvee God. and there's a, you know, guy, guy at the entrance there. And I believe there should be another guy around here somewhere. Hanging out in the trees. Who's guarding that car? Get him, Rocky! <laughs> <laughs> now, the key thing about the technology we do is also see, I can shake this and it's shaking along. You know, yeah. it's, it's. My camera's it's, shaking it's, too. But yeah, okay, okay. but, but uh, it's, it's like rock solid wow. with the ground, right? And to do this at one kilometer, two kilometers away is not an easy thing to do, so that is one of the key technologies. How much code did you guys have to write to do that? <laughs> There's a lot of... <laughs> Can you give me a stuff. hint of what the algorithms are doing to keep that image so steady? So, what? yeah, so we track features, but what is interesting here is we track features on a wide field as well as a narrow field, and we combine it with the inertial sensors like IMU, GPS, and we combine all of that to get to that rock solid uh, Wow. Uh, stability. So, so, and this probably this partly came out of the work you guys did with the football lines, right? That it's all a continuum in a sense. Because the, the early yeah. football lines, they had to put markers on the field, and now that thing works without any marker right. on the field, right? Now the key thing between the football field and the stuff you see here, and what we do on the helmet systems, is even what they do today on the football field, the cameras doesn't move a lot. It's very much at some fixed locations they're panning around. Here you want f 
to total freedom in moving around, right? So you should be wow. able to walk out of the building, come into the building, go to your grocery store, and it should keep track. And this right? is all tied with cloud computing because if Rocky's across the street using his goggles, that's right. He's gonna see that guy from his point of view. Exactly, right? exactly. Wow. So, so we could really play new <laughs> kinds of games. Absolutely. Paintball is dead. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be able to have virtual shootouts in the street, and people yeah, are like, "What are you guys doing? Oh, we're out of the game." <laughs> you, you can play a virtual uh, paintball in your home without messing it up. <laughs> so. well, you know, like, All right. <laughs> That's pretty cool stuff. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's pretty mind blowing. So, we're pretty close to that with the Google Glass. I mean, I, battery is a problem because keeping it on, yeah. uh, my battery only gets an hour and a half, but I, right. I'm carrying a Mophie pack in my, po in my pocket, which yeah. extends the battery by <laughs> seven hours or so. So, that's really cool. Yeah, so, so that, I mean, a lot of tech challenges like battery, communication, bandwidth, all these things, you know, but all these are things that will get addressed you know, going forward, so. Well, thank you so much. Um, on SRI, where do, you, where do we follow your work? Uh, so, we are in the Princeton. What would I search Google for? Uh, if you search Vision Technologies uh, under SRI, you will find the activity in our group. Uh, probably my name will show up in a lot of the references, too. Uh, Great. <laughs> so fun. Uh, thank you so much. No this problem. is really awesome. and. Uh, I, I hope it escapes the military soon, so we can use it. We can use it for shooting each other in the street. <laughs> Rocky's like, no, I'm not going to shoot you. You know you're going to when you get Google glasses, you want to put one in my head. Come on, man. <laughs> Thank you so much. No problem.